But yeah, I mean, listen, uh, just engaging Nate Diaz. I think just engaging would won that fight. No offense to Charles Oliveira, because Charles Oliveira is just as dangerous. I, I'm going to say more dangerous than Nate Diaz. More oh, yeah. dangerous. I mean, he is a threat everywhere, and he's a silent assassin. And we may see him. I don't want to say as the champion because I don't think he beat, beats Khabib, but I think he has a good chance of beating most people. You know, Connor would be a tough because of the striking style. Uh, but but yeah, but anyway, so so if that fight isn't made or if just engage it is offered, Diaz as as a, a different opponent, I think he would take that. You know, I mean, Jesus Christ, a win over Nate Diaz. Just to gauge, he just lost the belt. Of course, he wants to return in style. He wants to be at the forefront. He wants to fight for the belt. And of course, like all fighters, wants to fight for the most money that he can. And Nate Diaz ticks all of those boxes. And if you beat Nate Diaz, you know, uh, big things only, I guess. So either way, Nate Diaz ain't fighting him. Your suggestion is Gagey. I like your logic there. Poirier's booked. Oliveira's the other one. Dana said it's not Tony Ferguson. Dan Hawker is fighting Michael Chandler. And then you get down to Dos Anjos. Huh. I feel I Dos Anjos wouldn't be... I don't hate that either, because remember, they fought before. Dos Anjos beat him very handily, if I, memory serves me correctly. Uh, so I think Diaz would like that, and it'd be good for Dos Anjos. You know what I mean? That's a big, big win. So any, Or Paul Felder. He's next below as well. I doubt it would be Paul Felder. No disrespect to Paul. Love the guy. But yeah, he's... he's, he's uh, yeah, I think it'd be either just engage your half or Dos Anjos. What's up, everybody? I met with Abib Nurmagomedov last night, and today at three o'clock on the East Coast on ABC, the network, I'm going to talk about his decision and how it's going to impact the Poirier McGregor fight next weekend and the co-main event in the lightweight division. Three o'clock on ABC, the network. So next up. Uh, Saturday, right. we got the McGregor Poirier fight and Chandler and Hooker on right. there. So his words to me were, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch this fight." He said, "I would never tie up the division. Okay. I would never tie up the division, hold the belt, and keep the belt away from anybody else." These guys do something spectacular. Show me something spectacular. Wow. And make me want to come back and fight. Let's take a little bit closer look at this division because there is something very fugazi about the bantamweights. And there, there has been something that hasn't smelled right or looked right for about eight months now. If I was to take you back, we were told extremely clearly, the winner of Sanhagen versus Aljo will challenge for the title against the winner of Jan versus Aldo. Nothing happened, Jan becomes the champion, nothing still happened to the point that it looked as though the Montreal screw job was about to come into play. The night Sandhagen went out, had the wheel kick, got the big victory. Sandhagen didn't follow his own division enough to know that that was what was brewing, took the microphone and said the next shot goes to Aljo and I'll wait my turn. That is the only time that the paper actually hit the fax machine and went over to Aljo. Now I bring that to you because something has been going on at 135. You have TJ coming back and TJ is telling anybody who will, who will listen that he is under the impression that he may walk right back into a world title fight. I fully agree with you. I don't know that that needs to happen. All roads uh, that have to do with Dillashaw have got to lead straight into Uriah Faber's driveway or we're going to have a big miss right now. But as far as him getting that shot and coming back, look, something funny is going on at 135.
Uh, yeah, I had a little, I have, uh, I had a hard time to come back and uh, I need to, to take some time off. I was looking for for two, three weeks and get back. But after three weeks, <laughs> conditioning wasn't there, you know, like gotcha. I, I, I literally had one month uh, of no training and the path to come back was horrible. It looks like I was, I was, I wasn't doing nothing for like two years, you know, the way I came back, all body was sore, had no conditioning. I tried to to run to do the, those cardio sessions, row. Yeah, I, I was struggling for, I think, three weeks maybe just to get to a normal shape, not even a fight shape. Just to get to a normal shape, it took me like three weeks to, to get back in. I remember my sense of smell too, took a lot to come back. I, I already tested negative multiple times. But let's say it took me six to eight weeks to, to, to come mm. back to, to get my smell back.